Hey, what's up? I'm Brock. I'm Tay. And we're going to share with you the 10 worst parts about trailer life. Yeah, this is our second year. Tra winter? Second season. <laughs> season. <laughs> we are in the trailer full time from December until April. So never a full year, but plenty of time for us to know what we're talking about. Social media, Instagram, YouTube, is oftentimes like the glorious, beautiful, best highlights of van life slash trailer life. So we wanted to share with you some of those harsh realities today. Why would you do that? That's me. I would say it's hard more often than it's easy mm -hmm. and Instagrammable. Mm -hmm. I would also say in trailer life, the highs are higher than normal life and the lows are lower than yes. normal life. Yeah. Yeah. Like when your pipes freeze and you don't have a toilet. Bruh. But then when you wake up at a ski resort and there's like two feet of fresh powder and you're already in the parking lot. So we compiled a list of about 10 things. There are a couple things that don't apply to us this year, but they did apply last year. And the reason they don't apply this year is because we learned our lesson. One of those things is we got the trailer and we were like, let's hit the road. And we were like, let's go around the whole country in a month. In like um, 17 days, like 25 yeah, states. Yeah, try and make it home by Christmas. What are you, crazy? Oh. And we were like, it'll be so fun. And we just didn't do the math of like how much we would be driving every day. Trying to think about when we would get work done. What are we doing here? Uh, or when we would be able to stop and enjoy it because we were getting to places at dinner time and yeah. then making dinner and working out and showering. Sometimes we didn't even have time for working out or showering. Wait, what? And we go to bed and have to wake up the next day. And so like we were in all of these states, but we really did not get to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So then after the first three weeks of living like that, we were like, whoa, let's slow down. One of the really stressful parts about that is not only are you always on the move, hard to find time to work or work out or just actually enjoy doing this, but just like finding places to camp. Where are we going? Is not as easy as you would expect, especially free places to camp. Like they're very hard to come by. If you have a trailer, an RV, something bigger, you can't self camp. Mm -hmm. You can't just pull it. I mean, you could pull into a neighborhood, but it's just really obvious. It's a little less obvious with the van. And I would, I, we did it a couple times and I felt really anxious about it. I did not sleep well. And then if you want to be in or near a city, there, there are very rarely resorts or campgrounds close by. Now we're going to get into the actual top 10 list of worst things in the trailer. And these are in no particular order. We didn't rank these from worst to best. First and foremost is just something is always breaking. And I think this would go whether you do a custom build van or you have an Airstream trailer like whatever you have we've heard from so many people just something is always breaking whether it's a minor malfunction like a screw coming undone or a big thing like your door warping because of the temperature difference there's just always something going wrong in the trailer it's definitely i mean it's a home and then it's constantly vibrating on the, <laughs> on the road so things are gonna get loose things are gonna knock over mm -hmm. and it's bound to happen and that's part of the reason that we decided to go with a trailer from Airstream instead of doing a custom built van mm -hmm. because we knew things were gonna break. And to be able to just take it to the dealership and have them fix it and it doesn't cost us a dime because it's under warranty makes life a lot easier than if it was custom built and we were the only people that knew how it was built and how to fix it and yeah. it came out of our pocket. Very true. The second thing, you think about this more often than I do, but you can be worried about heat Heat. We have an AC that has a heat strip, but it's very, very loud. And so we only like to use that when we're gone and that we can only use when we're connected to shore power. So our other option is propane. Because of the size of our trailer, we can only house two 20 pound propane tanks on the front of the trailer. And you just have to be really mindful of it. This was something that was a lot more stressful and worrisome last year because we were camping without hookups in parking lots mm -hmm. and stuff like that. This year, we've been at a resort most of the time. We are hooked up. So when we're gone, we just turn on the AC unit and we don't have to worry about it much. Also, we did 
an entire winter camping realities video that kind of goes into more depth about our heating situation. The third worst thing about trailer life is just having a really small fridge between two people and two dogs. We have a small fridge and a small pantry. So fortunately we're super close to Whole Foods right now. So we can like go to the grocery store whenever we want, but it's hard to fit a lot of groceries in here and especially hard to fit a lot of like produce and things like that. So you end up buying a lot more prepackaged goods, things with more plastic, pre-made meals, which are more convenient, but also you just, they're, they're a lot more wasteful. I wouldn't say that we can't house a lot of food. I mean, we can fit a week's worth of groceries in there, but with produce and stuff, you just have to be careful because that does take up a lot of space. And because there's only two people and it is a smaller fridge, we opt for, like you said, the pre-cut or pre-prepared stuff because being able to get pre-packaged veggie stir fry instead of having to buy a whole thing of mushrooms and multiple bell peppers and you know whatever that can last us two meals and it takes up way less space than getting like each individual item it's not as difficult as i thought it would be i agree with that our yeah. we did it was last winter but we did a whole video about how much food we can fit in the fridge we can fit a lot it's just about having the same meal a couple days in a row mm -hmm and stuff like that. You don't have the same flexibility you would like at home with yeah. a big regular fridge and a big freezer. Our freezer is like the size of a half of a shoebox. Yeah, like you definitely can't house as much food, but you would be surprised how much food you can keep with you. The fourth one, which I'm sure everyone has thought about, is you have very limited alone time. You actually have pretty much no alone time. <laughs> it might be different in the warm months when you can go outside, you want to go for a walk, you know, things like that. But right now it's 20 degrees outside. I'm not sitting outside to do work. I'm only going for a walk because my dogs are staring at me. <laughs> That's why we chose the 20 foot Airstream versus the 16 is because it at least has two benches. So we're mm. not totally on top of each other, but we're still pretty on top of each other. Yeah. The fifth most challenging thing is just that it's hard to navigate, especially in cities, tight parking lots. If you have a van, you can maneuver through those areas a lot easier. When you're with this big trailer, we oftentimes are having like zoom in on the maps beforehand to figure out like where do we enter the parking lot where can we park is this like a giant mall parking lot where we are going to be fine or are we not going to be able to park here and we're gonna have to park like half a mile away and then walk to our destination that's something we learned our lesson with very quickly because we were like oh trader joe's let's go <sighs> and was it like was day one. <laughs> like the, i mean we all know that trader joe's are notorious for having the worst parking lots, mm -hmm. first of all. It was like the smallest parking lot. It was so packed. It's hard to make turns in this thing. You can't make U-turns, so you're like scared that you're gonna hit a dead end. Mm -hmm. And after that, like I had to run in and you just did circles while I went grocery shopping. After that, we zoomed in on everything. And our trailer's 20 feet. And I look at these people with like 33, 40 foot trailers and RVs and I don't, hi Shotzi. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. I don't, I don't even, think I would be able to turn into like a gas station. No, I'd be freaking out. Yeah. So <laughs> just be prepared for that. It's a little stressful. Yep. Number six is forced minimalism. Something that we were prepared for. And for the most part, it's not too difficult. Mm -mm. We are fortunate that we can maintain our permanent residence. And so we keep all of our stuff there. It's not like we have to keep it in storage mm -hmm. or sell everything. But even in the trailer, like yesterday, I wanted to get new perfume. And I was like, oh, I hope they have like a little <laughs> tiny like sample size because mm -hmm. I don't know where I would put it otherwise. Mm -hmm. Especially in the winter with the bigger clothes, you have to be very, very particular about what's important to you. Number seven, it's just noisy. It's noisier than you would expect. Both inside the trailer, like if anyone's walking around or cooking or doing anything, like you hear it, you're in close proximity. And then outside the trailer, it's like there's a megaphone hooked up to everyone outside the trailer. Cause someone can be like 20 feet away having a normal tone conversation. And it sounds like they're right outside our front door just yelling. Ma'am, do me a favor and just be quiet. Especially at night, early in the morning, you hear cars turning on, you hear motorcycles driving by. Every little noise is amplified in the trailer, which just makes you that much more anxious. Like she said, if you're parked in a neighborhood and there's a little old lady walking her dog at 4 a.m., it's gonna sound like there's a herd driving by your car. Like it's loud, it's scary it makes you anxious it's it's noisy this morning our neighbors i don't know what what they were doing but they were in and out of their car at like 6 a.m and i was immediately
immediately awake because I could touch their trailer from our front door and so you just can't get away with it. I'm sure if you're in a van and you have like some really solid insulation that might help but it's just not the same as being in like a house or yeah. an apartment and especially when you're in the trailer you're two feet from whatever noise is happening so you can't get away from it either. Next one is there's not a lot of privacy. Our windows are tinted so during the day we can have our windows in and no one can see in even when you walk up and like if you went like this you could hardly see in which which is something we, we really appreciate about the Airstream. It's the reverse at night. So as soon as daylight or dark. As soon as the sun goes yeah. down. <laughs> as soon as dark. <laughs> as soon as dark. As soon as the lights turn off outside. Yeah, as soon as the sun starts going down and it's brighter inside the trailer than it is outside, we immediately have to put the blinds up because you can see everything in here. And we can't see anything outside, which is a really weird feeling It's too. like a fishbowl. Yeah. And then also just like letting our dogs out in the morning. You have to make sure you're properly clothed because you have neighbors and like last night I heard a dog barking and so I wanted to check it out and I had to like put on regular clothes and take off my pajamas mm -hmm. and stuff because you just don't know who you're gonna run into and so there's not as much ease with that. Mm -hmm. Next up number nine on our list is just that the kitchen is small. We're really fortunate in the Basecamp 20X to have a two burner stove and a sink but even with that like dishes are challenging. You don't want to use a bunch of dishes to cook. You don't have a ton of counter space. You end up using this table because it's really the only counter space you have. And so just cooking becomes a lot less convenient in the trailer. And so because of that, like you said earlier, you end up having a lot of the same meals over and over again. You end up doing a lot of like big pot recipes just because you want to throw it all in and just cook it all together. So the diversity of foods that you can eat is limited and just cooking in general isn't the most convenient thing. If there's a meal where you have to use more than one pan or one plate, you're like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's just that it's literally doubles the difficulty to clean up. Speaking of cleaning, the other hard thing is that it gets dirty and dusty really fast because it's like the same amount of dirt as you would track in in your normal home, maybe even more. Actually. Probably, yeah, probably more because you're like really out in the elements. Yeah, you're, you know, in nature. And it's also a super, super compact space. So instead of our dog hair, you know, floating around a whole house for a week, it's only floating around like 100 square feet and it adds up fast. So we vacuum like every day, every night we like wipe everything down because it just gets dirty and dusty really fast. And because it's the only space that you're in and it's so small and you're staring at it, you really notice it too. Mm -hmm. Whereas like at home, you know, you know, you use the bedroom while you're sleeping and that's yeah. it. So you don't really notice if it's that dirty. But when you're sitting here, you notice every little thing. And I know we keep saying top 10, but we actually have 11 on our list. Um, and so the 11th one, the last one on our list is that bad weather means you're basically trapped inside. And for the two of us who spend the winter in the Airstream, it means pretty much all of our time in the Airstream we're trapped inside because either it's snowing outside or it's raining outside or it's just too dang cold to really want to hang out outside. If it was 75 degrees and sunny, like we did one beach day trip in the trailer, it's beautiful. You can sit outside. So nice. So you but can open up the doors and in bad weather you're really confined to this space there was a few days last year in washington in like the freezing pouring rain where we literally couldn't step outside rain is the worst rain is the worst because you bring in the moisture and like you can't just do laundry whenever you want so you have to wipe up all this moisture with your towels and you like can't dry your towels now all of your towels are dirty <laughs> and it's just awful yeah i think it would be like you said different if it was 75 and sunny every day <laughs> yeah but you really get stuck inside. This list is specific to our experience in a 20 foot Airstream base camp where we're in the winter 99, we're in it in the winter 99% of the time. So take these factors and consider how you might be affected depending on where you'll be camping, what kind of vehicle you're in. Some things might be easier or harder for you depending on that. So just keep that in mind. And also we love trailer life. That's why we do it every winter. It's awesome. There are a lot of really great things. Like we said at the beginning, we just wanted to also be realistic about some of the not so great things. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. And let us know if you liked our coffee cup <laughs> microphone situation. That was kind of fun.